Hey friends, this is Nancy with a special invitation that you and your family check out the Clubhouse. The Clubhouse is a community for Catholic kids. We offer incredible live events each month where we craft, we pray, we learn about virtues with Sir Roland, and we talk to a real life religious order. It's an incredible experience. I just love being on these calls, meeting you, and growing in the faith with you. So if you'd like to check it out, just check the notes for this podcast episode. Each week we have a different live event, and I'll be thrilled to see you there. Okay, here's today's episode. You're listening to Catholic Sprout, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Monday, March 11th, 2024. We are still in the season of Lent and still talking about a different martyr for each day of Lent. Today, we actually have two martyrs, the King Wenceslas from the 900s and his grandmother, Ludmilla. Before we talk about their very important stories, however, join me in our Lenten prayer, St. Peter's chains. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, who caused St. Peter, the Apostle, to depart, loosed from his chains and unhurt, loose, we beg you, the chains of our sins, and graciously keep all evils far from us. Bless us this Lent and give us the faith of the martyrs. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So like I said, we're talking about King Wenceslas, jolly old King Wenceslas, perhaps you've heard him called, and his grandmother Ludmilla. Well, they are both from Bohemia, an area of the world that we think of as the Czech Republic, the Slovak Republic, that area. But this is way back in the 8 and 900s. So what happened is two other very important saints, brothers, their names were Cyril and Methodius. They spoke the language local there at the time. And so they were commissioned by the Pope to bring Christianity to this region of the world for the first time. At that time, Ludmilla was a young woman. She was married to a local lord. I think his title was Duke. And they converted to Christianity and they started to promote it. But the problem was that many people, many other powerful people actually did not convert. And some of those that did convert, they converted in name only, which means that they did it for more political reasons, but they still practiced the ancient pagan religion that had been in that place before Christianity. However, Ludmilla's conversion was real. Her son, who took over the ruling of this area after her husband died, he was less serious about his faith, and he married a woman who also had been converted, quote unquote, but was still very dedicated to the pagan religion. Well, after this man died, he left behind a son, and that son was Wenceslas. And so his mother, as soon as this other king was out of the way, she stepped into the role to rule the area and she began to promote the pagan religion and even persecute those that had converted to Christianity. Well, Ludmilla stepped in as a good grandmother and she raised Wenceslas and she taught him to love Jesus, to love the church that Jesus had founded, and to really build his life on Christian principles. Well, as you can imagine, Wenceslas' mother, who was pagan, was not happy about this. And so she sent two of her servants to go and kill Ludmilla for her faith. In fact, as legend tells it, Ludmilla was strangled in her own veil. Well, soon enough, Wenceslas came of age. He was the oldest son, so he took control as the new king. And you better believe that he ruled as a Christian 
king. He instilled new laws that reflected Christian principles. He treated each person as a person made in the image and likeness of God. And he also promoted the growth of the church so that all people could have access to the sacraments. Now, perhaps your family has its own dynamics, but the family of Wenceslaus certainly did. His mother was still around at the time, and she was still very anti-Christian. And so she began to talk to Wenceslaus' younger brother, just about how unfair it was that he wasn't ruling, and to convince him that Christianity was the problem. Well, unfortunately, Wenceslaus' younger brother listened to all of this. And even though Wenceslaus had privately discerned a call to the religious life, he was going to give his brother the whole country, all of the control so that he could go and be a monk. His brother didn't know this. And on the feast of Stephen, which is the feast of St. Stephen, the first martyr of the faith, and this takes place on December 26th. So at a big banquet for this feast day, Wenceslaus' younger brother with some other knights attacked King Wenceslaus and killed him. So he died a martyr for the faith as well. But as you likely know, this is not the end of the story. King Wenceslaus, jolly old King Wenceslaus, as he is remembered in the song, he had a lasting impact on his country and even on his brother who took his life. The ideals of Christianity has sunk deep into this region. The laws that he established endured, and in fact, his brother and his ancestors converted, became Christians, and became great proponents, great supporters of the Christian faith in the region. And so we see this again and again with all of our martyr stories that although they died, the Christian faith did not die. And in fact, the blood of the martyrs went on to water the seeds of faith that grew generation after generation. And so this my challenge for you today, as we remember Wenceslaus and his grandmother, Ludmilla, I challenge you to do something loving, kind, wonderful for the grandparents in your life. Now, maybe your grandparents have all gone or you don't have a relationship with them, but I hope that there is someone in your life that fills that role of a grandparent, the wise, loving person that can form you just as Ludmilla formed Wenceslaus. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's someone that sits behind you at mass. Whoever it is, I challenge you to reach out and do something loving for that person. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Calling all Clubhouse members, get ready for our Virtues Chat with Sir Roland himself, the Dragon Slayer, this Thursday afternoon. We are going to be discussing the virtue of justice and you aren't going to want to miss it. So Clubhouse members, make sure you join, log into the community, find the link. If you would like to join us, if you are not currently a member of the Clubhouse, then this is your special invitation to do that and seize on your opportunity to meet the Dragon Slayer in person. Just check the notes for this podcast episode to find the direct link to sign up to join and to be there on Thursday with Sir Roland. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit spokestreet.com.